All right. Well, welcome guys to the STEM Cafe. We're happy to be here at Booker T. Washington. And hello to all of our online friends who are watching either now or during their lunches or at some point during the day. We're happy to have you. So I'm going to hand over to this brilliant, wonderful woman who comes actually from St. Louis because she used to be here in Tulsa, recently moved to St. Louis, and she has come back specifically for this event this morning. So thank you so much, Danielle, our representative from Nesby, and I'm just going to let you take it from here. Glad to have you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, she said, my name is Danielle Bowles Martin. Uh, to give you a little bit of background about myself, uh, I went to, I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, went to school uh, for my bachelor's degree, for one of my bachelor's degrees in uh, Missouri at Missouri University of Science and Technology, literally right up the highway. Um, I then graduated, got a second degree from there in engineering, and then came here to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I worked um, in the oil and gas field, um, essentially blowing stuff up. It was great. Um, <laughs> I did that for a few years. and. Due to being able to, wanting to be closer to my mother, I decided in the oil and gas field, doing some of your things, I would need to be close to my family. And so I ended up moving back home to St. Louis recently, literally a couple of months ago. Um, my background is in chemical engineering, ceramics engineering, and biomaterials. Um, I actually work right now. My job is to create the um, medicines that actually go into people who have serious illnesses, so cancers. Uh, people will have issues with birth, diabetes, like I actually create the stuff that they're using. So it's bypassing all of the immune stuff going right into their body. So that's what I do now. Um, it's not exactly blowing stuff up, but still very gratifying. So uh, this morning, I'm representing the National Society of Black Engineers. Um, happens to be the organization that helped foster me into engineering um, and STEM in general. Uh, we're gonna talk about today are a few very key attributes that everyone in this room has that'll allow you to be able to progress to find what it is you really want to do. We're gonna talk about some avenues of STEM that are kind of underrepresented, especially with the fact that I'm seeing a bunch of women in this room right now. This is even better for me, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna talk about some of the avenues to get to college, get to some of the things that you wanna do, and we're gonna have a little bit of dialogue. So if you, ever, if you have any questions, Feel free, stop me, clearly talk really fast. If you can't understand I'm, anything I'm saying, let me know, I'll slow down. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask. Um, there are very few times in the world where people will discourage you from asking questions. Anytime that happens, you probably don't need to be in that place. So this is a free space for you guys to, to ask questions, and I'm willing to answer any questions that you have, regardless of what it is. Um, so. First things first, why are you here? No, that, that's a serious question. No. <laughs> Someone tell me, why are you here? I enjoyed the first thing that we did with STEM. We went to go see hidden figures and stuff. Like, we talked about it, but we didn't just really get to like, ask a lot of questions. So oh, I'm okay. Go again. Nice. I'm here because I like when we in Japan. I don't want to know like the the details of it, so I don't know what I would want to do in the Gotcha. Who else? I need at least one other person. Well, I guess I'm here because I kind of wanted to see the parts that we don't get to see. Mm -hmm. You know, we see what the grades people get, and mm -hmm. it's nice. But I never understood like, what trials and tribulations that you guys go through, like as African Americans and as women. Oh, such beautiful answers. Such beautiful answers. Okay, so we're gonna address each and every one of those things because at some point, all of those, all of those things factor into the success that you have later, right? So, I have two, four, six, eight people here. I have a few gifts, if, if you will. I have chocolate for anybody who wants some because it's Valentine's Day and I think everybody should have chocolate. And it's good for you, just FYI, don't let them tell you it's not. Um, but also, there are some key attributes that you don't recognize right now that are fostering you into success no matter what it is, whether it's STEM related or not. Uh, one of those things is being able to introduce yourself. Um, ironically, and it always happens, there's only ever one person that ever does it. And because there was only one person to do that, 
I actually have something for you. The mom walked into the room. The first thing she did was acknowledge every person that was already in the room. Second, she decided to greet every person individually and introduce herself. Reminded those who she had met that it was uh, that she recognized them from the things she met them at previously, which allowed her to build a relationship with those people. The one thing you'll learn very quickly is that first impressions are very much lasting impressions. It changed the entire dynamic of what she did when she walked in. She walked in and all of you guys were very sweet. You all came in very jolly. You were pretty pleasant for people who were up 7 a.m. in the morning. Um, but it changes something when you build relationship. The first thing we're going to talk about is building relationships because building relationships is how you network. Um, as an engineer now, there are a lot of things that I do right now that I didn't recognize I was doing in high school. The first thing was I was building relationships. Some of the same people you're sitting right here with will be the same people that you'll be able to go in various industries with. These are the same people that you'll probably end up going to school with later on. You have no clue when it is you're going to see these people again. So it's always important, not necessarily that you have to be best friends with people, that you have a respectable relationship. That is the hardest thing that a lot of people learn in college. Uh, that it takes people the longest time to learn in college. Um, I myself had a mentor who forced me into learning to be more social. He forced me to randomly get up in front of groups of people in high school and introduce myself. Every time I spoke, I had to introduce myself. So from now on, if you would like to speak, and it's your first time, you must stand and say your name. You say what grade you in, and you'll say a fun fact about yourself, because it'll be your first time standing, okay? And every time after that, I want you to just remind us what your name is, because you're an important person. Everything about you is important. Every little detail about you is important. And once you get that concept, it makes it a lot easier to deal with a lot of things you're gonna go through later. Especially when it comes to getting into STEM because we do go through some trials and tribulations. There's a reason why STEM does not have a large percentage of people just flocking to it. Some of the math you'll take, only 5% of the world will know. Some of the things that you'll do, no one can replace you doing it. No automation can replace the skill set that you'll develop. The mindset that you'll develop for problem solving no one can take that from you, and you can use it anywhere. So, that's my whole spiel. Please learn to do that. Mm -hmm. It's important. <laughs> Second thing is taking initiative. Taking initiative to not only do things when it's comfortable, but when it's uncomfortable. It takes somebody who's willing to be different, be the first to stand out, answer a question. I asked that question intentionally. What are you here for? When I was in the seventh grade, uh, for those who just came in, hi. Um, I'm natively from St. Louis, Missouri. In seventh grade, I remember sitting in an area similar to this, except it was nothing but men here. The guy who was talking was an engineer, clearly a man. And his first question to me was, or to the entire group, was, what are you here for? Now, mindfully, I wasn't even supposed to be there. I was riding with someone else who brought their kid there. And I Excuse me, teachers, just a reminder, uh, we are getting ready to start a faculty meeting in the seminar room. Faculty will get ready to start a faculty meeting in the seminar room. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But I wasn't even supposed to be there. I just happened to have been waiting for somebody who was giving me a ride. And I didn't want to wait outside in the hole. So I decided to go in and sit with the guys. What could they do except tell me I couldn't be there? Right? So he asked this question. He says, what are you here for? What are you here for? And I'm looking around, and nobody seems to care to answer this question. I mean, like, literally, people just did not care. People were like, um, whatever, we're here again. Don't even know how many times they've met. So I was like, if they don't want to answer, I'll answer. And I told him, at this point, I have no clue why I'm here. Like, I have no clue what I want to do. I couldn't tell you where I want to be 10 years from now. And those are very realistic things. If you really stop and think about it, when do you ever get a chance to really process where you are in life? From elementary school, you're still you're a baby. Middle school, and you're somewhere in between 
baby in adulthood, but not really, because you really still can't do anything on your own. You get to high school, all of a sudden, they're enforcing that idea of being an adult to you. But you still got to ask these bathroom. <laughs> like, it's kind of awkward, right? But then college, like, honestly, as soon as you get out of high school, you're an adult. No one's making decisions for you. No one's telling you what you can't do. No one's forcing you to do anything. So when did you ever get a chance to really process where you were? It's perfectly fine. That's what we're here for now. Because honestly, the efforts of the people sitting in this room, we all know that struggle. We've all gone through that, those same stages where we've had to process where we are to get to where we are right now. Answering that question, why am I here? Why am I here? It's the first step towards you being able to process where you are at whatever point you're at. So if you don't know what you want to do, if you're interested in STEM and you just don't know where and what it takes to be in it, you've at least answered the question. You've started thinking about it, starting that process. That helps you be able to internalize, okay, don't really know where to go, don't really know what I don't know. Let me figure out a little bit more information. So that question was an open-ended question to let you know sometimes it's okay to not know, but also to step out of your comfort zone to find out. Step outside to address a question that you, maybe you don't really know the answer, and maybe the honest truth is you just don't know. There's nothing wrong with that, because it at least gives you the mindset to start trying to figure it out. Cool? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Now, I'm not done with stuff, but I'm not gonna tell you when I'm gonna give it out. <laughs> so just, just bear with me, bear with me. So, said I went to school in Missouri, right? Mm -hmm. Told you, I went to some random thing, they asked me a question. I was like, yeah, don't really know. That's what hopefully you're here for. Um, my mentor did the same thing I did to you. He pulled out his wallet, and he gave me $100. And I looked at him and was like, what? So then everybody's like, hey, 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 I know, I wanna know, I wanna tell you I'm here. I wanna tell you I'm here, and I'm just like, oh, now you wanna answer. Life is just like that. Sometimes you see the people getting the reward, but you don't exactly recognize what it took for them to get that. It takes a certain level of courage to be able to walk up to people you do not know. Introduce yourself. It takes a bit of, uh, it takes a sense of personal angst to be able to speak and say you don't know something, but you want to know more. Those are key attributes. You can do that right now. You're building those skills right now. So as we're going along, I want you guys to think about some of the attributes you possess, because I'm going to ask you about them. What do you think really allows you and prompts you to be the best person to go into whatever it is you want to do? What are the attributes that you need, that you have right now, that you can develop? I want those to be the mentalities, because honestly, college, te teaching you how to go to college, honestly, a lot of that's on Google. You guys are the most technology-friendly <laughs> generation I've ever met, like, quite honestly. <laughs> You guys know how to do things I don't even know how to do, stuff I'm still learning how to do, stuff I'm quite sure I'm never gonna learn how to do. And you guys are gonna be the ones innovating in technologies. And then I'll just be calling you guys weird and all that fun stuff like every other older generation does. Um, so, going back to that, went to high school. At that point, I had a mentor. Because he took me on his wing. He said, you seem cool. I just gave you money. You're going to be an engineer. I didn't know what an engineer was. I'm very clear. Um, as far as I was concerned, engineers drove trains, built bridges, eh, you know, plus or minus. Never really saw an engineer, at least not to my knowledge. Didn't really know that women could be engineers. Um, over the few years, he started taking me to college programs. And I mean, like, not taking me, like, kind of voluntold me, which you'll learn as you get older in life. <laughs> the concept of the voluntold. Um, he voluntold me to go to various camps. I went to every alma mater of every person that I had met through him. Quite literally, every camp. I can probably go to, I can probably, like, rattle off how many of them, but that would just be way too many. It makes no sense. But, I want you guys to think about the fact that there are opportunities for you to learn what it is you want to do right now. There are opportunities for you to do it. There are camps and programs designed right now. If you want to learn how to do medicine, if you want to get into medicine, any field, field of medicine, because there are so many that 
are overlooked, you can easily find a camp to do that now. You can find people who are in those things and they will foster you into whatever it is you want to see. If you want to do engineering, boy, there's a ton of fields of engineering. Depends on what you want to do. All you have to do is do the research to figure out where. How can I be exposed to this? That's all initiative you all take. Because no one can do that for you. Right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So, after he finally told me to a bunch of programs, then I had to apply to school. I'm sure you guys all had the, the college talk. Like, yeah. <laughs> fill out uh, paperwork early. Get your financial aid. That sounds all great until you're actually about to do it. And then it freaks you out because that's when that adulthood kicks in because your parents can't sign your paperwork for you. And you have to fill this stuff out. Your parents can help. Don't be wrong though. Don't you think that your parents can help you? They can't. And they'll be probably be one of the biggest resources or people that you'll meet. College advisors, high school advisors, they'll all be there for you for this stuff. But you'll be filling out this paperwork. And it's at that moment that those key attributes that we talked about earlier will present themselves. Your determination, your willingness to be different, your willingness to go for what it is you want, and for people to know you will change that experience for you. The more people you network with, the more resources you have to ask those questions, which makes that process a lot easier. I'm going to suggest that if you're within your first two years of high school, that you start already looking at your colleges. Not that you need to necessarily know what you want to do, but if you don't want to be here in Oklahoma, find out what it costs not to be here. Find out what it takes to get into the schools you want to go to. If you're in your junior or senior year, hello. If you're within your junior or senior year, I would say that you need to already have had a list, but in the case that you don't, that's fine too. Start doing that research. Uh, if you're a senior, your application should have been due back in December or like October-ish actually for like federal financial aid, but there's still plenty of money out there if you're willing to go look for it. Um, talk to your college counselor or your high school counselors. They're there for a reason. They get paid to do that. And clearly they like you. <laughs> so why not use them? Um, talk to people who have already gone. Sometimes the best thing you can do is go randomly talk to a stranger. You never know what they're going to have. Like, not talk to strangers, guys. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean, responsibly, right? Mm -hmm. But network. Your network really is important. You don't know where you're gonna meet somebody. If you go to church, there are people that are professions from all over, you probably never thought of it because you've seen them in your life. You're like, oh, that's Auntie May. Like, she <laughs> just goes and bakes things, but this woman's been working for Fortune 500 company her whole life, and she knows networks that you could have easily been tapped into, or programs that you could have been tapped into. Oh, you see somebody working over there with the kids, but you don't recognize that they're actually college recruiters, or they're, they're, they are connected to programs that you can get into. There's nothing wrong with tapping into the network you have. See the value in those people. Hi. Hey. When? Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> so after all of the, I don't know what I want to do, write down, write, write out your goals. To be honest, it's really easy to say I want to go to college. It's really easy to say I want to get into a certain field. It's a lot harder to pinpoint how to get there. I always tell everybody, write out a goal list every year. At the start of every year, you should have a goal list, a three month, a six month, 12 month. Your three month, what do I want to accomplish in the realm of education? So if you're a freshman, sophomore, you should be writing out, okay, at this point, I want to be able to talk to my counselors, talk to my teachers about how I can improve. Find out how you can get involved in your community, because that's the easy way to build transcript stuff. It's the easiest way to get recommendations, easy way to network with people too, because you don't know who's volunteering. A lot of these major companies around here have employees that are everywhere. We volunteer everywhere. There are times I've sat in the midst of a class and people had no clue who I was. That was perfectly fine, except that there were two young ladies who were trying to get into the stuff that I was doing. And they never opened their mouth. So, how are they supposed to know that I can do these things until I tell them? And then they're just like, um, oh, really? Let me come talk to you now. Be, be forthcoming. Put forth the initiative. 
okay? Um, your, your six month goals should most definitely be things that allow you to pinpoint getting to your 12 month goals. So if you are a junior or a senior, you're going into your senior year, you're going into your first year of college. Scholarship money should be a huge one. There are nonprofit organizations that give out a lot of money. There are a lot of major organizations that give out <coughs> money. Um, find those things. There are cotillions and little things that people can get involved in. If you are interested in a specific field, look into those scholarships. If you're interested in a specific school, you should be applying for everything they have. Don't be afraid to do something that looks arduous and really difficult to do. I know the Bill Gates Scholarship is the one thing I regret not going for because quite literally, two of my friends got it. But that paperwork was like a book. <laughs> and I looked at it and was like, oh, I'm good. I have enough scholarship money, you know. But my friends never worked a single day that they were in college because that scholarship alone paid for up to five years of schooling. Actually, I'm quite sure it paid for more than five years, but it covered all of, it covered their expenses. And so they had refund checks, and you learn the beauty of a refund check <laughs> once, you, once you get to college. But that's important. Taking initiative now saves you a lot of headache later. How do you go about like minority scholarships? Like I heard of them, but I've never actually heard of somebody getting them. Like, oh. What is it? So minority scholarships in STEM. I'm gonna focus on the STEM aspect of it. So STEM means you are a underrepresented minority um, in the STEM field. Underrepresented minorities are women, no matter what ethnicity, <laughs> African Americans, Hispanics, um, the Native Americans, and I think there's one other subgroup that's also lumped in there. But those are typically the underrepresented groups of STEM, and that means that they just have a low percentage, so they're trying, so they're, there's not a huge population of those demographics. Um, women right now in STEM are actually growing. The a lot of the major innovation that has happened in technology has been because of women in the last 15 years. So, like quite honestly, it's a big deal. It's a big deal that women are getting into it. It's a big deal that. African Americans to get into it because quite honestly it's it's something that's also growing rapidly but it's like it's a very small field I can tell you I can pull out my phone and I can scroll through engineers because once you go to school you, you kind of limit yourself a little bit if you go to a school that's only known for what you do and that's what I did I don't regret it um, but my phone is full of engineers if I showed you how many of them were black you'd be like man there's a lot of black engineers in here but honestly, that was probably everybody who was in my class. Like, out of like three or four hundred. So it's not a large population. If you walk around any majority STEM focused campus, if you're doing engineering particularly, you're not going to see many women, you're not going to see many ethnic minorities. So STEM scholarships are targeted towards those groups to try and increase those numbers. They're actually given out pretty readily at, at universities. Um, I'm not sure if you're referring to like the external ones, so like the McDonald's or the extra ones that you see like posted all over the place. Um, but people do get those as well. Um, a lot of these fast food, fast food joints actually do have scholarships. KFC has one. Everyone should apply because they like giving out money. And it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think my, uh, the minority scholarships are pretty freely given as long as you do the work now to actually qualify for them because there are terms and conditions. Like, like most things. So thank you for asking the question. Appreciate that. Awesome sauce. Any other questions? No, 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 no. Okay. So got to school or didn't know what I want to do? High school. Yay, flashy, I can do stuff kind of without my mom. And, but she's still telling me what to do. Senior year comes. And my mentor makes me apply to the top 25 engineering schools. I didn't tell him I was going to be an engineer. He told me. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. They, he told me that I was going to be an engineer. And I couldn't tell you how he figured I was going to be an engineer. I guess he just figured, I've been with you this long. You're going to do this. <laughs> and I happen to be good at it. Um, but like you, I had no clue what, what field of engineering because I'd only met two, form, two, type, two engineers at this point, civil engineers, which I knew all about them, 
they're the engineers that do your construction, your waterways, your bridges, um, your sewer lines, all of those fun things are all civil engineers. So blame them for the weird construction about how your streets are set up. It's perfectly fine. Blame them all day, I do too. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew computer engineers because I had, happened to have friends who were computer engineers. But somehow I was like, I, I'm supposed to choose an engineering field and not do you know what. So my mentor literally took me and we sat down and we researched each one of them. He said, what do you like to do? So I wrote down what I liked the classes that I liked. The classes that I may have liked and didn't do as well in. The classes that I just absolutely, there's absolutely no way. And because of that, I knew I wasn't supposed to be a historian or anything related to history, because I wasn't that good at it. <laughs> so, I encourage you all to do that. Stop, if you really want to know what it is you really want to do, what are you good at? Start with those things. There is quite literally a field of STEM to accommodate any and everything you, you want to do. I have friends who've made hair care products. I have friends who make makeup. I have friends who build motorcycles and cars and engines. Um, I have friends who blow stuff up, because I blew stuff up. <laughs> and it's fun. I have people who are medicine. I have people who do trades. But you have to start by figuring out what it is you like. What do you like? Because I can promise you, it all makes good money. <laughs> it does, I'll be honest with you. Engineers make a lot of good money. Doctors make a lot of good money. Oh, pretty much any field of STEM is going to make good money. Because you're, you're kind of irreplaceable in a way. You know you have a knowledge base that, not many, that, that takes some time to develop. But also, you have, you have to develop a people side, which makes you irreplaceable. Because robots can't in, be interpersonal. They can't troubleshoot the way you would. Because they can't factor all of the pieces. They have to program, or they react based on how they're programmed. So, in that, STEM is very lucrative. <laughs> You're going to get paid well, but that pay won't keep you there. It won't keep you in school when you're working 40, 50 hours on some papers or a homework assignment or that one instructor that you just swear doesn't like you. <laughs> and you're like, Mama, I don't understand. He gave me a C again, but I passed. Hallelujah. Like, <laughs> you, you, those struggles will happen. Uh, I can tell you the most universal struggle that we, that every person that's ever been through STEM, especially if you are going into a predominant field, like a school that's predominantly known for what you do, it is very cutthroat. It can be like that sometimes. Sometimes the industry you want to get into is cutthroat, but the university you went to is not. Sometimes there are going to be some stumbling blocks, like something will happen with your family. I can honestly tell you that it didn't take me four years to get all of my degrees. Actually, to get my first degree, it didn't even take me four years. It took me five. And then the other ones came right afterwards. But see, then you learn about the fact that no one's ever asked me how long it took me to get out of school. No one's ever asked me, did I repeat a class? Once I got that piece of paper, you could have graduated in two years and we was all on the same playing field. That's the exact same way high school is for you right now. Once you graduate, you're all on the same playing field. Doesn't matter if you graduated first or last. It matters from that point on, those key attributes that I mentioned earlier. How much do you want something? What are you willing to do to go get it? What do you want to do? And how can you get it? Those are the things that, that you control. So, no, just for the record, for those who want to know, I did not pass every class the first time. <laughs> um, there are a few classes that I was very upset in, but I was very grateful for a seat because you also recognize that some of these classes, quite literally, the instructors are trying to break you. And that's okay. Because they need for you to humble yourself. When you go to, in most of these STEM fields, you're either dealing with people who have done this for multiple, multiple years, so they're experts, or you're dealing with other smart kids, just like yourself, who don't know what it's like to get less than a B. And we're all sitting in a class, and we're all just like, I'm smart, and I'm smart too. And you all get a test, and no one knows what's on it. That's, that's, quite, that's quite normal, quite normal. I think I've cried a couple of times. It, it builds character, it builds character, guys, I promise. Um, well, not but if you're interested in something. Let's <laughs> <laughs> cry, not at once. Hey, just, it's, it's part of the process. I'm telling you, it's building your character. You just don't know it yet. Strong character, very strong character. You got it, hey, 
You got the mindset now. Good job. Because um, you, you cry. It's okay. I feel like tears are like your, your body's way of saying, I want to be happy. So, let's cry out the frustration. Let's cry out the frustration. It's okay. Trust me. Uh, I originally had two other friends. And it's your individual path that kind of navigates how difficult it's going to be for you to overcome a lot of those rigors. But I can tell you right now, STEM pays well, but that, that ain't a good motivation to stay and pursue it. I have several friends, very intelligent people. All they were looking for were the dollar signs. And you can Google it. You can Google right now how much a chemical engineer makes. you find a ballpark average on how, I'm, how much I'm supposed to make. You can even probably Google exactly my, what I do across my entire industry and find out how much I make, roughly. So you'll get a good idea. We get paid well. But I promise you, those times where, that, where you didn't know you were going to pass class or you didn't pass class, that mental break that you'll have, that money won't motivate you. Or at least it won't motivate you enough to continue. Mm -hmm. So it has to be something that you have a personal desire to, to get it. I hope you like it. <laughs> because getting something you like is even more important. It builds that stamina and that, and that drive to get it. And that's an easier way to determine what it is you want to do. Um, so should I do the thing that you told me to do? Like, you say your name? So um, I'm Janet Rodriguez. I'm, I'm Janet. in ninth grade. <laughs> and um, a fun fact is I like to draw. Oh, nice. So like, what do you do if you want to do more than one thing? Like, I want to be a psychologist, but like, I also kind of want to do engineering, and I also kind of want to own a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of random, but. Oh, no, it's actually really normal. So I have, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. So I started in it and I wanted to do med the medical side of things, except I didn't want to be a doctor because I'm way too emotional for that. And I can't handle like seeing people sick. But I wanted to be a part of it because my mom's disabled. I got into engineering. I chose chemical. I actually pulled out of a hat. We won't say anything about that. <laughs> pulled out of a hat. It happened to align with what I wanted to do. I was like, ooh, I'm going to go and, and help the world. I ended up working more oil and gas once I got into the field, or once I got into college, and it really threw me off. I was like, okay, um, I guess I'm doing oil and gas. I worked oil and gas, I graduated, came to Tulsa, and I blew stuff up. <laughs> I also worked as a substitute teacher. I have friends who are actors, who are engineers. I have friends who own their own businesses. I actually have two friends who are starting their own, like, bake, they, I think they bake cakes and cupcakes at our school and they're starting their business from school while they're pursuing their engineering degrees. Did you take advanced, like, advanced classes in high school? I did. Did they help me? No, not particularly. <laughs> but I'm going to be very honest about that um, because I don't want, I want to be as transparent with you as possible. Um, I had advanced, I took the AP test, I scored, I passed the math, uh, calculus A, B, calculus B, C, um, physics 1 and 2, oh, okay. and some other random biology AP test. <laughs> so, like, you become adults, you, you make the decisions, but they'll give you some road maps so you, follow, so you can follow it. Question? Yeah. I think it's it. Okay, my name is Taylor Love. I'm a junior. Okay. What about? Um, I, you know, I'm an expert. I can go through towns. You and I would be great friends. She's yeah. yeah. so cool. a world climate as far as I'm saying. I'm like, girl, I should hate you. Okay. No, serious. Like, engineers work at Hershey. I'm just. <laughs> just throwing it out there. Okay, but I have this question. So, I say, like, all my classes are advanced. So, mm -hmm. That was because of the scheduling and um, I I want to when I go to college I guess I don't want to start at like on level mm -hmm. but if I have to how do you well, I don't know if you have to do that I know you said like you repeat but how do you deal with that is that like a humbling experience or is it like a lot of things are college are humbling experiences um so there are two routes you can go to get into STEM you don't necessarily have to go the traditional university college route there are a lot of trade jobs that are just as amazing. Going, getting a trade, so 
getting into science technology, getting into the um, radiology, the, the medical fields that aren't necessarily requiring a four-year degree or a PhD or a master's, um, you can go up several different routes. So let that be known, guys. You don't necessarily have to go to a four-year university. There are a lot of different STEM fields where you can go into a trade, develop yourself in a trade, and quite honestly, they're making a lot of money right now because there's so few people getting into them, and they're willing to pay you to do it. So just if I look into that, awesome trades. Um, second, when you're talking about going to school, determining where it is you're gonna start, that's all about the research that you did. So when I got ready to go to school, I also had advanced classes in, college, in high school. When I was applying to my, my schools in general, I knew what the requirements were. I knew that they wanted me to start, they want me to start at Calc 1. Well, I already have Calc 1 and technically Calc 2 credit coming in. Well, not to say that you guys aren't getting a quality education, but if you're going into a field that's gonna be very intensive in one subject, I would highly recommend that you go and repeat those classes. Uh, mainly because you may be able to do it. You may be able to jump right into the classes that are more advanced. Um, but college isn't just about academically performing well. It's about being able to develop the person that you're growing into. Like the adult that you will be will be formed and shaped in the experiences that you'll get in college. <coughs> so if you're jumping in and all you're doing is performing academically um, and you're doing well, but you have no social aspect, or you're not really getting into your community, you're not really trying to develop those soft skills. It's gonna be a lot harder when you graduate. I have several friends who have 3.9s, no job right now. Those skills are just as valuable. Those that, hello, how are you? We get you a job before the, here, look at this, these advanced classes that I took. Because once you graduate, everybody's on the same playing field. And I want that to be something you constantly remember. It's a constant playing field. Everybody gets leveled out at some point. It just depends on how fast you level out and some of the extra things that you're gonna develop while you're leveling out. Um, but don't be afraid to, to go and talk to counselors. <coughs> Email people. All of the contacts for, your, for those schools are online. I can pull up OU right now and I can pull up all of the professors for all the classes and I can tell you, I can send them an email. Don't be afraid to do that. It'll probably, one, register better with the school, with those instructors if you do go there. It also allows you to ask the person directly what they're gonna expect from you. you. Heaven forbid you end up going to that school and you decide to skip over this course because you thought you knew it, and the next course starts exactly where you, starts past what you didn't know. <laughs> now you're behind. Just don't be afraid to be able to say, okay, I'm smart enough to know this, this will be a good refresher, or maybe I don't know as much as I probably should to be able to be good at what I'm doing. Pretty much, go with that. Any other questions? questions? Okay, thanks. So once you get to college, um, apologize to your parents, and yeah, that's probably my biggest advice, apologize to your parents. <laughs> Because um, you don't recognize how much they dealt with <laughs> until you start having to, pay, having to deal with those things like paying bills. It's real. Adulting is hard. <laughs> um, also, don't be afraid to ask questions. Quite honestly, a lot of my professors, the classes I didn't do well in, it's because I thought I was too smart to ask questions, or I was afraid of looking stupid, or I was like, oh, I can just pick this up from just spending extra time that I wasn't gonna spend. Because realistically, who wants to spend all their free time in a book? Unless you're reading something that I want to read. You know what I'm saying? So don't be afraid to ask questions. College is gonna teach you that very quickly. College is also gonna reinforce how you deal with people. So high school, come here. I don't like you, I can leave. I hope you fall in a knee or a ditch or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can say that, that here, because you're gonna leave. You're gonna go home to your environment. They're gonna come back. College, you're gonna see those people every day. 
seriously, like, it might be your professor. It might be the person you're living with, because you're gonna have, you're most likely gonna have a roommate unless you're rich, and I, I wasn't fortunate enough to be rich enough to have that experience. But it teaches you how to deal with people. Sometimes people who have, who have never encountered a personality like yours. Like, I can honestly tell you my first roommate was from Nebraska. She laughed because she said I talked funny. And I was like, well, you act funny. <laughs> and to this day, she's a nuclear engineer in Hawaii. And I visit her every year. Like, one of my closest friends. <laughs> but you, you develop these relationships. These relationships are literally, starting today, you should be looking at all of your relationships very differently. Because honestly, that's what's going to help you in college too. You're going to need friends, let me tell you now. You're going to need friends. You're going to need those people that's going to be like, can I cry with you? And can you help me solve this problem? And then we can cry again afterwards. <laughs> like, you're going to need those people. Hey, com comedic relief is real. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people who don't do well in college typically don't do well because they didn't really learn the, the networking aspect of building relationships. Your friends are your network. You don't think of it that way, but your friends are part of your network too. If ever anything happened, who the first people you gonna call? Your friends. You know what I'm saying? So if they have resources that you can use, if you have resources they can use, you should be able to call on each other. The mentality is, well, you've been in school forever. Yeah, but this person now is business. They got out and they were hitting the ground running because they're happy now in what they're doing. Before they were just doing it because their parents told them they had to be an engineer or like you need to make money, you need to survive. But the means to take care of yourself will come because you enjoy what you're doing, because you want to be good at it. You want to be great at it. That's what you should aspire for. Think about that when you're choosing your schools. If your school isn't known for what it's doing, Find out what other aspect that will help, that this school possess that will help you grow. There are tons of different types of schools. There are private schools, there are liberal arts, there are technology based, there are HBCUs, there are small technical colleges, there are so many different options for you. Look into them all. No one tells you you have to go to a four year university. No one says you have to get a four year degree. But that's the mentality we put ourselves in. It's kind of a lot of times expectation pushed on us too. Don't be afraid to go against that. These are your development years. How you develop is your choice. Advice is purely that, it's advice. Once you get to that point of making your own decisions, I love my mom. My mom's opinion is very important to me, but she won't be able to deal with the consequences of what happens from me listening to her make my decision for me. So you learn that. You learn how to make informed decisions. Ask questions, please ask questions. Because if you don't, life gets hard. Um, also, eat properly. Like, that sounds bad. It sounds like really weird, but seriously, college is real. Like, ramen and pizza are everywhere. And um, soda is everywhere. It's, it's in abundance. <laughs> like, every meeting you go to will have pizza and soda, yes. chips. And I miss it. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. There's, you could always find free food in college yes. if you want it. I'm serious. It's the one thing I miss about college so much. But also try to have a standard of, of eating. Like, eat regularly, please. Um, watch out for your emotional, your physical, and academic health. Because all three of them are important. If you are emotionally unstable, most likely, physically and academically, you're going to be bored. So resolve those things, address issues. If you're around people and the crowd of people you're around don't help you succeed in, in those areas, you probably need to cut them off. Or you need to limit them. It's part of growing up. Fortunately, college will force that into you. Um, <coughs> just don't be afraid to make those decisions. And eat, please eat. Like, <laughs> I don't really even know how to reinforce that one. That was something I, I was always scared of. People like lived on pizza. And I was okay with that because I lived on pizza. But also have friends who were so focused on the things they didn't eat. And you'd be surprised, like your body has to live with you. Like, <laughs> like, and you have to live with your body. Heaven forbid, you get out of college and your body's so broken down that you end up accumulating issues. So. It's actually a problem. Yes, I'm going to go. Sorry. Okay.